Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's an interesting view request problem that at first seems kind of difficult, but if we see through it and we think of a clever way to do it, it's not so bad. So let's take a look at this. First of all, let's read the problem. A ball is thrown at 20 meters per second and an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal at a wall 15 meters away. Where should the person stand to catch the ball if the velocity when it hits the wall is the same as the velocity that it bounces back and the angle when it hits the wall is the same as the angle when it bounces back. So the idea is that it will not have reached maximum height when it hits the wall. It will bounce, continue to go up, eventually come back down and the person will have to stand at a different distance in order to catch the ball. So probably have to move backwards if the ball didn't quite reach maximum height. Of course, if it gets past maximum height, then the person will have to go forward to catch the ball. The way to do the problem is as follows. What we can see here is if there's no change in velocity at the wall and there's no change in angle at the wall, it is almost as if the ball just continues on like this and the person will have to stand over there to catch it. If there was no wall, that would be the exact same problem. So I guess we need to bring the person down so the person is not floating up in the air. But the idea is that this part of the curve and this part of the curve should look exactly the same is the velocity doesn't change and the angle doesn't change. So it simply becomes a find the range problem. How far does the object go? So to do that, we first have to find time in the air. So the first question is time in the air, the total time. And assuming that it's thrown from the same height as it is received, we can then say that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times t plus one half g t squared. And of course, what we need to do here is we need to find both the horizontal and the vertical initial velocity. V initial in the x direction is V initial times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is one half. So this is equal to uh, 20 times one half or 10 meters per second. And then the vertical velocity initially in the y direction is v initial times the sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 20 meters per second times 0 0.866, which is 17.32 meters per second. So that gives us the initial velocity in the x direction and the initial velocity in the y direction. So plug that into the equation here. The final height and the initial height will be the same, so we can call that zero plus, oh, that's not an equal sign, that would be plus initial velocity in the y direction, which is 17.32 times t minus half a, so because g is a minus 9.8, so minus 4.9 t squared. Then what we can do here is we can say 0 is equal to t times 17.32 minus 4.9 t to the first power, like this which when we solve this quadratic equation, we can say that t is equal to zero, or we can say that zero is equal to 17.32 minus 4.9 t. Of course, this is at the starting point when the ball hasn't left yet, and the other possibility, t is equal to minus 17.32, when we bring that over, it becomes minus, divided by the minus 4.9, so t is equal to, 17.32 divided by 4.9, that gives us 3.535 seconds. So 3.535 seconds. And then all we have to do is figure out the range, the total range from here to here. So this would be the range. So the range is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times time. So in this case, that would be... Uh, 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second, times 3.535 seconds, which means it's uh, 35.35 meters. And then we could say, well, if it's 15 meters to the wall, then how much further is it past the wall? That would be the distance going back. That means that x is equal to the range minus the 15 meters to the wall. So this would be 35.35 meters minus 15 meters, or x equals 20.35 meters. So the person would have to move back a little bit over 5 meters 
to catch the ball as it bounces against the wall, comes back. That would be the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, we'd have to figure out what would be the height and the velocity at this point, and that would then be the initial starting point for the remainder of the trajectory. But again, if there's no change in velocity and no change in the angle at the wall, then you can simply assume the wall isn't there and the projectile just continues all the way on and you figure out the distance that way. And that is the best way to solve it. Yeah, sometimes it just makes it easier when you just kind of see it and go, okay, I don't have to worry about it bouncing back. I just think of it as a continuous motion.